Well, hello, I'm Danny, and this is my ridiculous collection of PB Swiss tools that I've been collecting over the last couple years. And uh, I don't know, I just thought it'd be really interesting to share my thoughts on these tools along with the 500 to 1,000 people on YouTube who probably are interested in PB Swiss tools along with me. So without further ado, let me uh, show you my tools. PB Swiss is the fourth largest company in Switzerland, and they're basically one of the most obsessive compulsive hand tool manufacturers in Europe. Over the last century, they've primarily been run by the Bauman family, and they like to keep tradition alive. And you can really see that in their promotional movie that they made. It's kind of corny, but I just, I don't know, I really like it. I kind of nerd out over it. I'm like one of the only people that's commented on their video too. But yeah, I just kind of like everything that they stand for, and their tools are really nice. So anyways, I guess I'll show you what I got. So uh, here's the first tool that got me really into tools um, for PB Swiss. This is a, um, a specialty film tool, as they call it, on PB Swiss's website. And basically what it is made for is uh, screwing in cameras into a tripod. It's got an extra wide flathead shank here, which is made for going into uh, cameras. This is a like a little camera dolly and it has it's made for extreme grip, <laughs> extreme torque because uh, when you're dealing with expensive cameras that cost in the realm of half a million dollars or more you better damn well sure make that you screwed it in all the way. I like the quality of the finish of the steel was super nice and the hardened tip so like where the black meets the aluminum you can see that it's very consistent and I've noticed that on all of their tools. Vice, some of the other brands of tools that have hardened tips that are professional. This Matco, uh, if you were to get a good look at this tip, you'll see that it tends to not be totally consistent from the point of hardening to the normal steel. Now, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, you're still gonna be able to unscrew stuff. However, it speaks towards a level of their quality control. Uh, that's kind of what got me off on my PB Swiss kick. Yeah. Most of my tools have the classic style handle and I'm a huge fan of that. What they're specifically made out of is something called butyrite, so Celia's acetate butyrite, which is a plant-based plastic. And these are also sustainably, sustainably sourced, which is kind of cool, maybe a bit of a salesmanship on their, on their side. They used to come from cotton uh, until, uh, I guess there was like a shortage of cigarette butts or cigarette filters and then they had to switch over to like the conifer plant. Now, this is not just cellulose acetate, it's cellulose acetate butyrite, which is specifically the same kind of family that uses, is used to make uh, film. Two different tools that I have that I've actually show the wear of the handle. So here's a number three that's relatively brand new. And here is a number six flathead, which has been used extensively. As you can see, uh, one of these is super clear still and the other has been worn down. This one has seen a bathroom renovation and been handled by construction crews extensively and the text on it has definitely worn off and so has some of the transparency on here, whereas this one's totally super clean and slick. Apparently this stuff has a vomit smell once it gets worn down to a point where like it's in a moist environment. However, on the PB spec sheet, they actually tell you that they infuse these with a vanilla aroma. And if you actually smell a PB Swiss screwdriver, you will be able to tell, yes, it actually has a slight vanilla smell to it, which is super weird. But I have never had a problem with the vomit smell. So if that's like something you're worried about, I wouldn't be too concerned with the PB Swiss brand. I have heard of that being an issue with the Vera brand on uh, AVE's channel. All right, so here are my Allen keys. These were super expensive. This was like a $70 set or something, and then this one I got used for like 36 bucks. They're, this is their version of a multicolored hex set. Uh, as you can see, if you were to look really closely, you can see the metal has immediately shown underneath the paint job. This is just like a cheap paint job they did on here. It's really not well done. Here's Vessel, which is also a high brand Japanese tool maker. Uh, they have done the same thing with the rainbow colors. If you watch the video, they don't actually break, they just bend. From what I had read, um, comes from a, a spring steel that's specially sourced to just them, but they do have a proprietary method for how they shape and, and form their steel that gives it a really high hardness of like 58 to 60 HRC. Here is a 
multi-bit version of a PB Swiss tool. I was super stoked about it when I got it. Despite like having a super high quality bit retainer and really nice bits, like listen to that. It's very inconvenient to get into this tiny little handle. It's just a smooth dome. It's really easy and slippery to not be able to grip. Honestly, there's a better tool than this, the Pick Quick. <laughs> this thing is way better. The design uh, of quickly being able to access any bit by pushing it through the handle and magnetizing into the handle is just more efficient. Maybe there's a better version where I can get around this silly little cap that's hard to open. So I ended up purchasing this expensive ass tool right here with a ratcheting head on it. I don't know, I don't really like it that much to be honest. It was like a $90 tool, so it was definitely a ridiculous amount of money to spend for something and I'm kind of embarrassed that I bought it. However, it does provide an extremely nice ratcheting head that is on par with the quality, if not better, than I've seen in other brands like Snap-on. This ratchet part is amazing. The rest of it, however, kind of feels like a Disney version of a PB Swiss tool. It's, it's a well-made tool, but what they had to do to get access to these bits is have an opening here and a huge opening in the handle here. And it just ends up kind of feeling kind of wonky, to be honest. You can kind of see it, there's just a big hole opening here. It's just, it feels like it's gonna break, or you could just squeeze it and malform it. Now, it's actually pretty strong, but you just end up having to have a huge freaking handle for this versus this little one, which kind of is more appealing to me because it just seems easier to uh, manipulate in small places. I think the Pick Quick has them beat on this, and the Pick Quick's probably like a $10 screwdriver. So I just wanna give a quick comparison between the grips of different screwdrivers here. So here's the Snap-on, the Viha, just, I don't know, the Godori for good measure, the Vessel, which is a Japanese version or a Japanese tool, and then, where is it? Our screwdriver. So as you can see, they all have different handles with a different emphasis on different uh, shapes. The Viha, the Godori, the Snap-on tend to have, and even the Vessel to an extent, tend to have kind of a light bulb shape to them. Uh, just made to get a little bit more grip on towards the tail end here to really torque something over. The PB Swiss has more of like a, a barrel shape, maybe more in line with like the Klein tools that are just, they're not really designed for specific torque in any one section of the screwdriver. They're just sort of universally um, of the same thickness, though, I mean, obviously the middle here is a little bit thicker, but it's not towards the tail end of the screwdriver in a light bulb fashion like the rest of these. These are just made for a different kind of application than most of these other screwdrivers. The PB Swiss, aside from the Snap-on, has probably the shiniest chrome vanadium finish on it. The Vessel, the Godori, and the Viha all have kind of a matte finish. Also, the Matco even has a matte finish, which is another German screwdriver, so maybe it's just Germans and matte finishes that they just really dig for whatever reason, but I would say honestly the PB Swiss looks the closest in metal finish to the Klein. There's a similar shininess that they both have that uh, just looks similar. And the finish on their tip hardener is pretty similar too. The, here's a difference between the Snap-on and the PB Swiss number two. Definitely a different kind of hardener is used to make the screwdriver head. One thing I'd say that the Snap-on has on the PB Swiss is on their head they actually have like super tiny uh, grippers to get into the screw. And I think that does make a little bit of a difference. It does grip the screw in some ways a little bit better. I'd say the PB Swiss overall seems to be slightly more precise um, on the tip. In terms of screwdriver quality, I think the Snap-ons are super overpriced compared to the PB Swiss. This is probably like a, a 10, $12 screwdriver, which is pretty expensive, but this is a $26 screwdriver. Here's some of my precision bits for like working on computers and such. Here's a PB Swiss anti-static um, posit drive head, and this is a Weha or Viha flathead. Um, the PB Swiss finish of the cap here is super loose and easy to turn, whereas the Weha does not have as much spin to it. 
meaning the bearing on this or whatever is used to attach this spin head is, I think, quite a bit better. Here's a random special edition flathead uh, I have that is actually gold plated. Nothing really to say about it other than it's kind of like a super fancy, slightly pretentious tool that I enjoy. I'm kind of afraid to use it because I don't want to screw up the uh, gold plating here, which is, I don't know. I was just curious. It was on sale for like five bucks, so I just figured, hey, why not? Strange things PB Swiss does, but kind of, kind of interesting. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at my uh, PB Swiss tools with me. Uh, if you liked it, say something below and uh, I'll probably respond to it because, you know, it's nice to get comments every once in a while. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you later.